Hi, it's Daniel from Mond of Copenhagen, and today we're going to be talking about black tie. So to begin with, we should establish what is black tie. Black tie is a dress code within which men would traditionally wear a dinner suit or a dinner jacket and women would wear traditionally a long dress. In America, dinner jackets are often referred to as tuxedos, so that might be a term that you're more familiar with. But for the purposes of this video, I'll continue to refer to it as a dinner suit. Dinner suits traditionally are worn in the evening, so that would be after 6 p.m., and they are not the most formal thing that a man can wear. That would be white tie. The dinner suit was invented around the turn of the 20th century as a slightly more casual alternative to the very stiff and formal tailcoats that would be worn with the white tie dress code. As they're a new thing, they were, they're only 100 years old. Most men's clothing is around 200, 250 years old. We need to know what characterizes a dinner suit or a dinner jacket. And there's a few primary things. The coat is short, so unlike a tail coat which goes right down past your knees, a black tie dinner jacket will be the same length as a suit jacket. So extending just past the bottom of your seat when you stand. There is silk on the lapels, so the lapel facings will be silk and the shape of the lapels will either be a peak lapel like what I'm wearing here, or a shawl collar, which is round all the way around the back of the neck. There's usually one button on the front of the jacket rather than two or three, which is the standard for daytime suits, unless of course it's double-breasted, in which case there can be many different button configurations for a double-breasted jacket. The standard being mine that I'm wearing here, which is two sets of buttons that close and then one right by your nipples that does not close. Additionally, with dinner jackets, there is not flaps on the pockets. So on my suit jacket here, I've got flaps on the pockets. They are removed for dinner jackets in the name of simplicity. So you want it to look as clean as possible, which is the reason why there are no pocket flaps. Historically as well, there have been no vents on the back of the jacket. Um, and the reason for this is because frankly, there were not vents on the back of most jackets at the time. Vents were a fairly common thing during the day, but usually it was only one in the middle down the back of the jacket, um, especially for tailcoats. In, and that was seen in white tie and morning dress, which would be the daytime equivalent. Um, but the vents were removed for the dinner jacket. This is primarily for visual cleanness at the back. Vents, as much as many people like them, do break up the silhouette somewhat. They also allow you to put your hands in your pockets, which, although many men like to do that, it is considered rude and definitely a faux pas in terms of etiquette when you're at dinner or at a party standing with your hands in your pockets may not give off the right impression. But in the interest of those many men that do like to have their hands in, the, in their pockets, even if it's just to briefly go in and out to check your phone, many dinner jackets and dinner suits these days do have vents on the back. But that really is the only major difference between something that you would see now and something that you would have seen maybe a hundred years ago. So there are a few fabrics that are the most important when looking at dinner suits. Um, the primary one would be black berthier. This is characterized by a very plain matte weave and it's very very heavy typically you'll find overcoats sometimes even made in in lighter materials than this so so it's very heavy and it's very warm the reason for that is when the dress codes black tie white tie were invented 
there was no central heating. It was, white tie is about 175 years old, black tie is around 120 years old. There was no radiators then. People were cold inside. If you were wearing something in the evening and the clothing wasn't warm, you also weren't going to be warm. So they needed this very heavy cloth to keep them warm in the night time. Another benefit of that is that the drape was absolutely magnificent. I mean, it falls like a curtain. Absolutely great, but a little too hot for most men these days. So as central heating began to evolve and made its way into most homes and commercial buildings, you found some slightly lighter weight fabrics becoming available and becoming standard. So still black barathea, still heavy-ish, heavy enough to drape very nicely, but not so heavy that it's gonna feel like you're wearing an overcoat in your living room or at a party. Um, so these are 420 grams, 15 ounces, very comfortable, a very livable cloth, not something that's gonna, gonna overheat for most men, especially in the evening and even more so during party season in the winter. Just as these fabrics are inspired by the development of central heating, they're also inspired by the development of artificial light technology, which most people f often forget is actually a relatively new thing. It's only about 100 years old. In the 1930s and the 1940s, midnight blue was popularized because artificial light is much warmer than natural light and therefore blues actually look very dark in artificial light, especially blues that themselves are already very dark. And the main selling point for Midnight was that in artificial light, it actually looks blacker than black. So this is a great option for the sort of very sharp, very polished, and very dark and formal dinner suit. Um, it's, it's really great. And then of course, some men actually want their dinner suit to look navy, right? They don't, they don't want it to look blacker than black. And in that case, there is also a navy option. So you've got the navy, midnight and black, and they're available in two different weights. So they're available in 15 ounces or 420 grams. And then they're also available in the even lighter weight, probably good for a year-round tuxedo dinner suit, which is 340 grams. So that's going to be no problems with overheating in that most of the year, especially at night. Beyond that, odd jackets, odd dinner jackets, always worn, still with black trousers, still with the characteristic stripe or galon down the side of the trousers, but they themselves do not have to be black. Dinner jackets refers to any jacket or coat that you will be wearing in the evening. So that would be either as part of a dinner suit or an odd dinner jacket made of a contrasting fabric. A very traditional option for this would be white. Perhaps the one that most people would be familiar with would be James Bond wearing white dinner jackets in the tropics. That's exactly what they're for. Slightly brighter, slightly more sunny environment calls for a white. And I know that although this one is also a matte wool barathea, like the black that we looked at before, we also have whites available in silk and bamboo that are gonna be a little shinier a little more luxurious. And one of the things with an odd dinner jacket is actually that it doesn't need to have silk facings on the lapels. So if you're going for something that's already bold, you can perhaps tone it down by just keeping it one color rather than having contrasting black silk all over it as well. This is equally true when you look at velvet dinner jackets, which I know lots of people like different from the smoking jacket, which would be much more actually like a dressing gown. The dinner jacket would be styled 
in velvet, exactly the same as you would style it in wool. The only difference is it would be made out of a, a very plush and luxurious feeling velour in navy, gunmetal grey, Bordeaux, black, bottle green. Lots of different options here for the velvet and all of which are very classic besides perhaps purple, which maybe I wouldn't suggest for the less daring among you. Finally, as dinner jackets go, there is another traditional option that many men shy away from these days, and that is tartan. Tartan being a Czech fabric characterized by very square checks, so they are completely square rather than the rectangle window panes that most men are familiar with for suits. They are used traditionally in Scotland. They're in implemented into English dress codes through the military and very, very traditional for odd dinner jackets, especially this one, which is called the Black Watch Tartan, named after the military regiment, the Black Watch in Scotland. But this is also available. There's a, a slightly bolder, perhaps black and white here and a black watch, the same as the first one. So you can see they are the same pattern but this one has red rather than blue. And I know that actually our Hamburg store has this on a mannequin because it does cut quite the dash when you see it with the rest of the outfit. Something worth considering, not for everyone, and it is very bold. Now we've looked at the very traditional fabrics and, and some of the moderately traditional ones that we might consider for slightly warmer weather, year round use, but then what should you wear if perhaps you're a gentleman that's just always too hot? Or you're going to a wedding and you want to wear black, but it's in the south of France or it's in America, in Florida, and you're just gonna to be too hot in one of those traditional options. We actually often recommend tropical wools for that. Things like Fresco, Chris Bear. These are highly twisted made of highly twisted yarns, so they're very, very strong. This allows them to be woven very sparsely, so the, the actual yarns are less close together when they're woven. Um, the reason that the thread needs to be very strong for this is because, of course, the, the force, uh, the force expounded on each individual yarn is going to be higher if there are less of them per square yard or square meter. So the yarns need to be very strong. This technology has developed a lot over the past 50 years. So we can have these very open weave fabrics that let lots of air pass in and out of them. So they're gonna let your body heat escape and more importantly, they're gonna let wind and air conditioning in. And I know that we've got some very popular ones in both 100% wool and a mix of wool and mohair, like in our Winus collection. These are a great option. The mohair has a little bit of a shine to it. The 100% wool one, not so much. Um, and they're just really great options for if you, if you tend to overheat. You can get the 100% wool frescoes in a very heavy weight still and in black so it can still look very traditional still be very matte because it's got no mohair but it's incredibly breathable so you're not going to struggle with overheating finally when it comes to talking about evening wear there's now a, a debate that goes on should you be wearing anything in between your jacket your coat and your shirt Traditionally, yes, you should. You should be wearing a vest, a waistcoat, or a cummerbund. Now, the tradition of wearing waistcoats in the daytime and the evening dates back hundreds and hundreds of years. And the reason for this, the reason is because shirts were traditionally considered underwear. So you wouldn't wash them every day. 
people didn't wash their clothes every day, shirts would probably be dirty, they would be sweaty, and they wouldn't be made of the nicest fabrics sometimes. So you didn't want much of your shirt to be on display. A vest, as well as being, of course, a fashion piece, would serve the practical purpose of, of hiding large parts of your shirt. Um, and this is even more so true in the evening when your shirt needs to be very stiff. If you're wearing a, a vest, it means that less of the shirt needs to be stiff because there's less of it on display and therefore you can get away with having the rest of the shirt, like the arms and the back and the sides, be not starched stiff and therefore more comfortable. So that's the history, the historic argument for wearing a vest in the evening. In modern times, the argument boils down quite simply to formality. It is more formal and then also more flattering to wear a vest because it gives the impression of elongated legs, which of course makes gentlemen look taller and slimmer. I can't think of a man that doesn't want that. A cummerbund serves all the same purposes, but just takes a slightly newer role in history. Cummerbunds introduced to the British military by the Indians when they were abroad is a sash-like garment worn around the waist in place of a waistcoat, in lieu of a waistcoat, in hot weather traditionally, but now in all climates. The reason for this is because, of course, even though a vest serves the purpose of covering your waist and hiding lots of your shirt, it's still hot, still an extra piece of fabric on the back. It's still extra pieces of fabric round on your chest. So in those hot climates, especially when wearing a white dinner jacket or as the military would with their mess uniforms, cummerbunds were switched in for, for waistcoats. This allowed the wearer to be kept cool, but still kept decent, as they would say, not, not displaying too much of their underwear, their shirts. And they similarly elongate the legs visually and create a much more flattering silhouette. Now, of course, there are some men who simply don't like the way that it looks. They think it looks too formal, and that's fine. You are, of course, allowed to wear clothes however you like. But historically, this is the way that it's been done. And aesthetically, I would certainly make the case that it looks better. So, another name that you may have heard, or perhaps not heard, for the black tie dress code would be semi-formal evening dress. Now, of course, the fact that it's referred to as dress, derivative from the military mess dress, which would be worn in the evening by soldiers in the British military. Semi-formal, meaning it is not full formal evening wear. It is not white tie. It is softer, it is more casual, it's not got a long tail coat, it's more comfortable to wear, more relaxed. Finally, the part that lots of men, particularly our American cousins, are confused by is the evening part. Black tie is traditionally and ideally worn in the evening. That would be after sunset or after 6 p.m. And the reason for this is because there is a history of changing throughout the day. People would change to mark different points in the day. They would change, they would have different outfits for different activities. And it was always the case that dining was done in the evening, formal dining. So people would change for the evening to dine, whether it was at home, at a hotel, at a friend's house. Very rarely would people dine in public. In modern times, this is preserved in British weddings. Often the reception uh, will be held in the evening and the ceremony will be held in the daytime. It is still not legal in the UK to marry in the evening. It has to be done during the day. So 
The wedding ceremony will be held in either morning dress or suits, and then traditionally and still largely, people will change for the evening, and they will change into a dinner suit or perhaps a slightly nicer suit if they don't have a dinner suit, maybe something a little more formal. And the reason for this, there's, there's a few. The reason that it's continued, I think, is because black on especially people with fairer skin tones does not look so good in harsh natural light. It can wash people's skin out. It can make you look very pale, which is the reason why generally the darkest colors that we see during the day for day wear are charcoal gray and navy blue. Still dark, but not black, because they, they do not have the same capacity to make your skin look incredibly pale. This is why even in dress codes such as morning dress, which is the daytime equivalent of white tie, there is very little black, unless it's for a funeral. You will traditionally be wearing gray trousers, probably with a cashmere stripe, and you'll traditionally be wearing perhaps a light gray or a colored waistcoat, probably either a colored or a plain white shirt, always with a white collar and cuffs, and a colorful tie, perhaps even a pocket handkerchief. The thing that will be black will be the coat, the, the body coat, the tail coat, but even so, it's a, it's, a, it's a very important, but only one part of the outfit. The reason for this is, is just because it simply looks better not to be wearing that much black during the day, because it makes you look pale. So the reason I think that many people have continued to, to save evening dress for the evening is because it looks better. And also, it successfully demarcates a change in occasion. This happens at almost all weddings. There is a clear distinction between ceremony and reception. And lots of people like to, to mark that with their dress. There are other ways of doing this, of course, than buying two full outfits. Some men may not like dinner suits or they may want to wear one all day. Um, in that case, they can maybe change something else about their appearance. They can add a pocket handkerchief or they can change their hair or they can change their socks or something. But the most traditional way of delineating between your appearance during the day and in the evening is by changing into a dinner suit. I certainly think that it's a, it's a very nice thing to do, especially on those special occasions. It's quite nice to, to mark that with a change of clothes. So that'll be all for today. If you have any questions about any of the information discussed today, feel free to leave them in the comments, or indeed if you've got any suggestions for future things that you would like to have us cover, we're more than interested to hear what you've got to say. Thank you.